Hey everyone, welcome back. And it is now time again for that once a month thing where we do the stats and update them for Racine for you so that you know what's going on in the real estate market here in the Racine area. So of course we do have stats from Mount Pleasant and Caledonia, but today I'm just gonna go over the ones for the city of Racine. If you do want more, I'll tell you how to find those in a little bit here. Be right back. Yeah. Uh, here we go. And welcome back. So here we are. We are back with our Racine stats today. So one of the reasons why I'm not going to go over all the stats is that number one, it keeps our videos a little bit shorter. So it makes it easier for you to consume. But number two, we actually have a brand new website and it is so exciting because you can actually find some of these stats for yourself really fast and really quick. And third reason is because if you want to know these stats, you can always contact me and I'm happy to send them out to you. So let's get into this today. Um, and I will tell you how to contact me in a little bit here. We'll do that as a little break as we get along. So let's jump right into the Racine stats. So first of all, if you remember from January, the Racine stats said that um, we had an average list price of 190 and an average sale price of 177, which was looking really good because those numbers were coming together. They weren't as far apart. However, here we are looking at the February stats and those numbers have spread apart a bit more and that's not good. So for February, we're looking at a list price of 214,771 and we have an average sale price of 170. Now that means that our sale prices have dropped and our list prices have gone up. Guys, you got to understand that when you put your sale price higher, it actually causes you or when you put your list price higher, my apologies, you put your list price higher, it does cause your sales price to drop exponentially. I don't know how many times I can say this or how many months, but I'm just going to keep saying it till we get this figured out in our market. But the lower, the closer you are to the sale price of your property and the better your pricing is, then you're going to get that. And sometimes that's when you actually drive the price above. And what we're seeing right now is we are not seeing over asking prices on all properties. There are a few, but that's usually where the agent doesn't know what they're doing in that market. And they're so grossly underpricing the property that of course they're getting over asking, but they're asking their list price was wrong to begin with. So we really have to bring that into line. So 214 was the average list price and 170 was the average, well, 171 was the average sale price approximately. Now, looking at sold listings and versus new listings, because this is really important. We need to have more new listings than we are selling. And we still do in this, and, and I'll show you how that affects everything later. So in February, we did have 40 listings that were sold, but we had 46 that were listed. And that's great because we also, the previous month had 33 sold and only, and 50 listed, which means we're having more houses listed than we have sold. And that is a positive for our market. Now, a lot of people say, yeah, but then the people aren't getting their houses sold. You don't understand. There is always a certain percentage of people who put their house on the market just to kind of test the market, just to see, hey, maybe what if I could get X price? And that always skews the numbers a little little bit. So um, those putting those houses on the market, having more houses listed than are sold is what's going to bring us back to a healthier market. And here's the evidence of it. So the absorption rate in January was 0.97, less than a month, but just about a month. And now because we have more houses being listed and not quite as many being sold, and that absorption rate has gone up even more. Now we're at 1.01. Now that may not seem like a big deal to you. But when you look at the fact that last year in February, we only had 0.74 of a month, only three quarters of a month of inventory. Having an entire month or just slightly over an entire month is an improvement over 2023. So we definitely want to see that number keep trending up. We need to have more houses listed. And again, as I said, part of the problem is in the city of Racine, we really should, and I've said this before, in the city of Racine, we really should have about 100 houses listed every month, not like last month where it was 46 houses listed. So we really need to have about 100 houses listed every month 
to bring us back to a healthier market, which actually increases buyer confidence and sellers. Well, you may think that some of these numbers are really trending positively towards you, and they are in general. You need to understand that if buyers don't have confidence to buy, it actually hurt you as the seller as well. Now, the other thing I want to look at here is the sale to list price in 2023 versus 2024. And that sale to list price, that's pretty important. So let's take a look at that. The sale to list price in 2023 was 97.8%. That means that people were not actually paying attention to what their sale price should be versus their list price overall. And it does mean that in February of this year, we're at 99.1%. That's a really great number. That means that on average, the houses that are selling, so these are the houses that are actually selling, those are the houses that are coming closest to their list price. They're selling at 99% percent of their list price, which is an excellent, excellent number. The other number that we need to look at here for February is the days on market. So days on market, it tells us how many days it is taken to sell a house. That doesn't mean from sale to close. Days on market actually counts basically the days when you list your house till you get an accepted offer. And as long as you close, now, if you if you get an accepted offer and you don't close, then that number goes away and it jumps up. So if you get an accepted offer and something happens at inspection, you don't come to terms on it or whatever happens at that point, then all of those days do add up. So that's where we kind of get the number, not skewed, but where it gets a little bit bigger than sellers might think is good for them. But the reality is it's from days on market when you first list your house to when you get an accepted offer. Those are the days that they're looking at as long as you close. All right. So those, the average days on markets last, uh, last year were 31.8. That's actually good, but not great. Last year in 2023, they were only 31.8. And we really, really, really want those numbers to be higher. We need those numbers to actually be closer to 90 again for a healthy market, for one where buyers have confidence to know that they have a chance. Because what's happening is there are buyers that are being chased away from the market because they don't think they have a chance of buying. They don't think they have a chance of getting a house. Unfortunately, our days on market has actually dropped in February to of this year to 26.5. Now, it's not dropped a ton, but we don't want that number to drop at all. That number should not be dropping at all. Can I repeat that? That number doesn't need to drop. We can't have that happening. Okay, so what do we say with this? Well, here's the reality. We need those average days on market. Now, sometimes when we get to the March and April and there's more houses being listed because it is the spring market, those numbers do come up a bit. So when we get to the end of March, we'll look back at the whole quarter and we'll kind of get a quarterly assessment as well as far as how we're doing. But now, the last number I want to go over, and this is a number that even if you are not selling your house, if you're just a homeowner, this is kind of important for you as far as tracking your own homeownership. But before we get to that, I'm going to go back and I'm going to talk to you guys about one other thing. So this, we just launched our new website last week, uh, well, a week and a half ago, it actually came live and we had to do a couple of little adjustments just to make it personalized more towards us um, because until it was launched live, we couldn't update some of those items. So once it was launched live, we were able to update some items and now we have an amazing cool tool that you can use. So if you are in the Racine or Kenosha area, actually, if you're seeing this, um, you can actually go to tamthomes.net. So that's www.tamthomes.net. And at the very top, you're going to see a tab that says Market Snapshots. In Market Snapshots, it has every municipality east of the interstate, including Wind Point, um, Elmwood Park, and some of the smaller ones that you may not realize. And when you go in there, it's going to give you the basic stats. It's going to tell you, and it's just going to take the last 30 days whenever you log in. Now, I like to look at a month on month, so we wait until March till we look at February, but you can actually look at it day on day. So if you were to go in today, it may not show, it might show you like February 27th as to January 27th date. So whatever day you go in, it's going to 
go back a week and then it's going to look back a month for you to give you those stats. So the cool thing about this tool is that you can see that snapshot at any time you want. I am going to put a link in the description below so that you can click on that link if you want to, or you can just go to www.tamthomes.net and choose market snapshot at the top. It's on the top navigation so really easy to find and then when you click on market snapshots it gives you the whole drop down list of whatever one now i do want to caution you that when you are looking at smaller ones like windpoint elmwood park sturdivant smaller markets like that keep in mind that a month on month analysis is not as good but if you scroll down the page you will actually see the whole year in review chart as well down there and that's better for those smaller markets because it gives you a better overall view of the health of that market more data equals more accurate data that's always been the case anybody who does stats understands that and knows that but Let's get back to Racine and the most interesting thing for homeowners. The most important stat for homeowners is what we call the sale to assessed. So sale to assessed is the most important stat that a homeowner can have or be thinking about, etc. And why is that? Well, here's the main reason why. The main reason why the sale to assessed is so important is because it's something that you can do yourself. You can take your tax assessment, your property tax assessment, put it up against the sale to assessed, and it will tell you approximately what your sale price on your home should be. So in the city of Racine, um, we have been pulling sale to assess for quite some time, and we are averaging overall for the year, we're averaging at about um, 140%, somewhere in that range. And right now for last month, we absolutely were right on track with that. So if you were to take and you say your home should be listed at 200,000, and I'm going to use 200 because I'm better with round numbers, and you're at 140%. Well, that means that your list price, if you're assessed at 200, and your house is in average shape, meaning it's not distressed, it's not outdated, okay? You do have to have a kitchen that's been updated in the last 10 years and bathrooms that have been updated in the last 10 years. Um, if it is longer than that, doesn't mean they're not functional, doesn't mean they're not great. It just means that you're not going to get that full sale to assess because you're not considered an average home if you don't update your kitchen every 10 to 15 years, and if you don't update your bathrooms every 10 to 15 years, that's not considered average in our market. So it doesn't mean fancy, just means updated, refreshed, etc. And that doesn't just mean paint. Uh, so what we're looking at here is the sale to assess at 140%. And let's say your home is assessed at 200,000. If your home is assessed at 200,000, then that means your list price should be somewhere close to 280,000. And 280,000 is not bad, especially if you're looking at your assessment and it says 200, that's really good. Now, this doesn't trend completely true. The more expensive a house gets, the more that number drops a little bit in that the more expensive, once you get over 500,000 as your assessment price, then your assessment price is probably not 140%. But since the average sale price in Racine right now is right around the 195,000 mark, that means that for most of you, your house assessments are probably somewhere close to 150,000 or 140,000 and you're getting almost 200 for your house. So that's where that comes into play um, when we're talking about the city of Racine. And that's really important because if you want to track your details year on year over and over and over, then you want to pay attention to that sale to assess. Specifically for February, the sale to assess came out at 142.53. So a little bit up from the tick from the general 140. But we also know that that goes up and down a little bit seasonally. So anyway, just to let you guys know, that's where the sale to assess is. And you know what, we're in really good shape. So hope that that really helps you out and hope that you're able to get some value from this. If you do find any value from this content, do us a favor, click the like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss any of our other content. This of course is our market stats update, but we also do other content on home ownership so that you can understand how to keep your home well and how to keep it nice um, or fun things to do in Racine. And that's on our Living in Racine channel. So that's on this channel, Living in Racine. Uh, we do also put this video onto our real estate channel that is just real estate stats and is just hardcore real estate. So if you're interested in that channel, you can go check that out, which is just Kimberly and Russell Mann Realtors. That's 
pretty simple and easy to find us. But living in Racine is specific to the things you get to do in Racine, the fun things you can do, the events that are going on. And of course, every month you get your market stats as well. Anyway, thanks for joining us. Um, hope to see you back here soon. And if you have any comments or questions, drop them below. We love to hear comments and we love to get questions. Talk to you later. Bye for now.